This video is a complete one-stop shop comprehensive guide on how to mod your Xbox. This will work for any model of Xbox, whether it be version 1.0 all the way through 1.6. If you don't know what that means, that doesn't matter. This guide will show you exactly what you have and what you need to do. Whether you just want to soft mod your Xbox and upgrade its hard drive and not solder a single thing inside, that is fine. Or whether you want to TSOP flash your Xbox and upgrade the hard drive. Everything is included for files in one easy to find download linked in the video description. I haven't made any of the tools provided, but I've collected all the tools in one place. You're also going to want to have one of the exploitable games. The easiest one being Splinter Cell, either the original release or the Platinum Hit release. Now there's a lot of copies of these games available. You could probably go down to your local game store and pick one up for under $5. Now if you have Agent Under Fire, you have to make sure that it's one of the original releases. Same with Mech Assault. Now both of these games you can tell by the code either by the, on the front or the back of the disc like you can see here. And then you could also use Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. I don't have a copy of that game but I have a copy of Splinter Cell and Agent Under Fire. So I'll show you how to use these two games in this video. You're also going to need to find a way to get an Xbox save file to your Xbox. Generally this is done by either using an action replay tool, which is extremely hard to find, or you can use a USB stick, which most of them are incompatible, or use a low capacity SD card. Anything under four gigabytes should work fine. And then I use a USB SD card adapter plugged into a Xbox to USB controller port adapter. Now you can make the Xbox to USB controller port on your own or you could buy it on eBay. I recommend buying on eBay because they're fairly cheap. I've got a link in the description. That's everything you'll need for a soft modded Xbox. Now if you want to have a soft modded Xbox with an upgraded hard drive, you're most likely going to need to upgrade your I ribbon cable or your IDE ribbon cable to an 80 pin from a 40 pin which is what is stock. Now if you don't do this you might get an error code when you try to boot up your Xbox with your new hard drive in it and not know why. Well that's the reason why. Now also if you want to use a modern SATA drive you need to get a SATA to IDE adapter which I've also linked in the video description which can be set to either master or slave. If you want to TSOP flash your Xbox, you're going to want to have a soldering iron, a little piece of wire, and some flux, and you'll be able to solder the bridges in this video regardless of what kind of Xbox you have, excluding 1.6. You'll also want to have a few blank DVDs, preferably media that is DVD minus R, you can use DVD plus R, but I've had more success with DVD minus R on most drives. There is a big debate on the forums on what media will work with what drive, but in my experience, if you go with DVD R, 90% of Xboxes will boot it up just fine. And finally, to get your Xbox all apart, you're going to want some tools. That being a Torx bit set mainly only Torx bit number 10 and Torx bit number 15. This will get you inside your shell and get the motherboard out. Now if you're only going to be soft modding then you're only going to want to have a Torx bit 15. So again this video is a complete comprehensive guide on how to mod your Xbox no matter what kind of Xbox you have even if you don't know that there are different kinds of Xbox. This is a long video because it covers absolutely everything, but most users do not have to watch the whole video from start to finish. Okay, so we're going to start off by setting up our Xbox memory card. I'm going to be using a 2GB SD card. If you use anything larger, your Xbox might not recognize it. 
and I'm going to be using an Xbox to USB adapter. I made my own, but you could buy yours on eBay, which I'll have a link in the description. So just assemble it and plug it into your Xbox. Then we're going to want to go to the memory section. Once that boots up, it should give you not quite this screen, but I know this SD card works, so I'm just going to unplug it and plug it back in and there you go. But you should be greeted with this screen. I'm just going to plop in a different SD card and it should say it's going to erase your card. There you go. So once your SD card is properly formatted, we're going to jump to our PC and in the video description I've included a link for all the files that you're going to need for this video. So you're going to download that and extract it to your desktop. This should only take a few minutes. It's fairly large because there's a few disk images in there. Um, I'm going to have to refresh my screen. That's why it's not showing up. There we go. So we're going to open that up and in the first folder called soft mod, we're going to open up the fat X Explorer. Now I'm fairly new to this program. Usually it was a different program. That was a different, that was a little buggy, but you're going to right click and run as administrator. And we're going to plug in our SD card to our computer. Now it's going to prompt us to format it right away, which we're not going to format. So either cancel or close out of that screen. And then back at Fat Explorer, we'll click over devices and just click refresh. And your Xbox memory card should pop up. We're going to click load device, leave disabled, and then we're going to mount on partition X. So now we've got a file explorer for our SD card, which we can use to just drag and drop our files that we need, which I've got included. So in the soft mod folder, we're going to go down to the soft mod package and we're going to extract the soft mod save. So you're going to see the UData folder. We're going to extract that right to our desktop. So you're going to see I'll select UData, drag and drop. So this is our installer, our soft mod installer, but we need a game save to launch it from. So I'm going to copy over 007, which is Agent After Fire. Now I'm just going to merge these two folders. Now you only need to copy over the save file of the game you're using. I'm going to pretty much copy them all over. Now some of the games have US version or European version so just pick the copy that's relevant to you. Now again you only need to copy over two files or two folders. I've got four in here just because I'm going to be loading up multiple games later on just to show you the differences. So but what you want to do is copy over the folders that you do have in here right over to the file explorer that we had earlier for our SD card. Now once that's done, all the save files are on your memory card so you can close everything up here and we're going to unmount our memory card just by closing Fat Explorer and unmount and exit. Okay, so now we're going to actually launch our exploit by picking one of the games, obviously the one that you have, and launching the save files. Now we're going to have to transfer our save files to our Xbox. So we're going to go over to the memory section and plug in our SD card back into our Xbox. So with that plugged in, you should see the controller or memory card and controller there. So we're going to load that and you'll see I have a whole bunch of save files, obviously, but you should only have one and then the soft mod tool. But I'm going to copy over Agent Under Fire. Mech Assault, you have to have the first run of the game which I don't have but Splinter Cell you can have any version whether it's the first version or platinum and then finally you're going to want to copy over the soft mod tool this is a little bit larger than the save file so it'll take a few more seconds but same thing so once these are all finished copying over you want to exit out and then we're going to be loading up the game so I'm going to be showing you how to do Agent Under Fire because there's a little bit of a trick to get the exploit actually up and running. So we're going to pop it in. Now normally all you have to do is load the save file. So you can see once Agent Under Fire loads up, 
We'll try to load up the save file on our hard disk, but it's just going to give us a black screen. To actually get it to run, you're going to have to select the mission and get the first mission to load the very first video start to finish. Why they do this, I have no idea. I assume it's some kind of buffer overload kind of thing, but I don't know. So I've sped this up, but you got to watch this video all the way through. And once you get control to start playing, you press start and quit the mission. And then you can select the mission, which will let you load the save file. So we're going to back out of this screen, load mission and select the hard disk. And now there you go. So this is going to load the soft modding tool so now i'm going to show you on splinter cell which again any version will work what you got to do is boot the game start game and load the linux save now if you have another save file on here it has a problem loading this exploit so just make sure this is the only save file you have for splinter cell so anyways, all you got to do is pretty much press A and the Xbox is going to take care of everything else. Now it's going to ask you to take out the game disk once it restarts and you see the flubber screen. So right here, we're going to press the eject button and we're going to take out the Splinter Cell game. Now you can close the tray or leave it open, doesn't really matter, but the Xbox will start back where it left off. And you can see all these screens pop up. You don't really need to know anything besides the fact of Shadow C, which can cause you problems later on down the road. Now once we get up and running, you're going to want to go to Applications right away and go to NK Patcher. It's the only program on there. And we're going to go all the way down to EEPROM. So once we're in EEPROM, we're going to go down to Advanced Features and Hard Drive. And then you're going to want to select EEPROM key, the only key. So now what this is doing is it's updating our Xbox to have a null EEPROM which means your Xbox is going to be locked to all ones. Now this will work with Xbox Kai Link or whatever it's called. So, but once that's done, we're going to want to back up our Xbox as well. So what you got to do is plug in your Xbox to your router and you'll see in the Xbox screen, you'll see an IP address pop up there. Now take that address. And then in the files that I linked in the description, in the extras folder, you're going to see a program called FileZilla. We're going to install that, and this is going to let us access this, uh, our Xbox hard drive. Now your Xbox has to be running, and then type in your IP address in the host portion, and Xbox as the username, and Xbox as the password. Now we're going to do a quick connect and click OK and you'll see this is your Xbox hard drive. Now what we're going to want to do is click E and you're going to see there's two folders that say backup. One is your original dashboard which is your original Xbox settings and all that before it was soft modded and your EEPROM. So you're going to copy these two folders over to your PC. Now it doesn't matter where, but I'm just going to create a folder called Xbox Backup and just copy these directly on over. Now this will help you out later on if anything goes sideways down the road when you're modding your Xbox. At least you'll have the original files to bring it back to normal. So you can see you could just drag and drop. I'll get more into FileZilla later on. So now we're going to get things set up to upgrade our Xbox hard drive. We're going to open up the files that we downloaded and then the second folder is for 
upgrading the hard drive and other tools really, you're going to see three disk images and a program to burn it with. Now you don't need to use this program, but you don't need to do any other settings but drag and drop, so I recommend it. So once it, it installs, we're going to launch it up. Now I don't have a DVD burner on this computer, but what you got to do is click the very first option and then take the disk image you're going to burn, drag and drop over the window, and you'll see a whole bunch of screens pop up. Just select the minimum supported speed and burn. Now label your disc. Now for your DVD media that you use, I use DVD-R. There's a big debate on what kind you should use, but I use DVD-R. Anyways, I'm going to boot in Rocky 5 Extras and we're going to scroll down to Advanced Apps and install Chimp. So we're going to install it right over to our E drive. So pretty much all you got to do is press A and let it do its thing. Once Chimp installs, we're also going to install XB Partitioner version 1.3. Again, just install it to your E drive, press A, and then let it do its thing. Now these are two apps to get your hard drive to recognize. Now we're going to un or disassemble our Xbox. Now to disassemble your Xbox, you're just going to need either a Torx, well you need a Torx 10 and a Torx 20 bit. Now you can get this at your hardware store or any pretty much electronics bit kit as you can see that I have here. Now I find it's actually easier to use a full size screwdriver than a small electronic screwdriver, but either or will work. I also like to use a heat gun just to get the glue a little bit malleable so that the stickers will pull up. You got to pull up a portion of this sticker here and also the barcode sticker because there's a screw underneath of each that you need to get to to get the shell of your Xbox disassembled. So I heat it up and put a piece of wax paper underneath so that they'll stick afterwards. You don't have to do this. This is just for a person personal preference but then I also heat up the pads of the Xbox and in the top corner is where the screw is but if you heat it up and then pull off the pads you can get the stickers to stay with it now these are all Torx 15 sorry not Torx 10 and we're going to unscrew everything so there should be six screws so four underneath the feet and then two underneath the stickers once these are fully unscrewed i use painter's tape to tape those back down so they don't get pulled away and you gotta do a little bit of prying but the shell will come off just be gentle then i take off the ide cable and then the power cable to the xbox completely unwire it around the side and then this is where we switch our bit to torx 10 and from here on out, all the bits are going to be Torx 10. There's two ones that are a little hard to get to for your DVD drive. And one that connects the DVD drive and the hard drive together. Once you have those disconnected, you'll have access to your Xbox motherboard. Now, some people won't need to go any further than this. So I'm going to go a little bit out of logical sequence, but it's most efficient because we got our Xbox completely disassembled. So we're going to take care of the clock capacitor right now if you have one. Version 1.6 Xboxes don't have a clock capacitor, but if you do have one, then it's either it's always going to be in the lower right hand corner and it's going to be surrounded by three large capacitors or one large capacitor and it's got two circles circled around it. So you can see here those two circles I'm talking about and most of the time you can see that it's been leaking like this one. So I've included a few reference pictures in the download pack but you're going to want to just take a set of pliers and yank this out. Now you don't have to be too too gentle and it's probably going to be really easy to pull out and then just snip off any kind of extra wire that there is there. 
Now, if you wanted to TSOP your Xbox, now is a good time because your Xbox is disassembled and you're right at the motherboard. So, if you've got a version 1.0 or a 1.1, well, you're going to have to solder top and bottom of the Xbox port. So you're going to have to do a little bit more disassembly. If you can't tell what kind of Xbox you have, take a look, peek here and you can guess what version you have. So I'm going to show you a 1.2 to a 1.5 just because you have access to that right now and you don't need to fully disassemble your Xbox. Now I like to use a single strand of steel wire because it's fairly pliable and it's very hard to pull and accidentally pull off the pads of your motherboard. Now to get things prepped up, well, what you want to do is add a little bit of flux to the areas you're going to be soldering. I've circled those earlier. I've also included pictures in the downloaded pack. Now you're going to heat it up and add a little bit of flux and then put your wire right above it and apply a little bit of heat and it should stick right to it. Hold down with your finger and snip with a set of pliers and there you go. You should have bridged those two points. I'm going to do again to the top part of the screen here and now you can actually see me solder the wire. Now once it's soldered on, with my finger down, I'm going to snip the excess wire. Now you got to watch out, you don't accidentally pull and it's still connected and you pull apart your parts or your pads. So now we're going to do a version 1.0 or a 1.1. Here you got to fully disassemble your Xbox. So again, we're going to use a Torx 10. Now, I didn't show you, but there is two screws right by your AV port. So just make sure you got those fully disassembled. And then the trick is, is to pull it down and up and you should be able to slide the motherboard right out. Now I'll circle the points that you got to solder, but I do got pictures in the download pack again. So again, you just apply a little bit of flux, a little bit of tint to the points that you're going to be soldering and then Put down a little piece of steel wire and snip. So again, this is the bottom portion. And there you go. So now I'm going to show you on a sharp Xbox, which is fairly rare. So on the top portion, you actually got to solder two wires instead of a bridge. And on the bottom part, you got to add this jumper wire. Now I've got pictures included in the download pack for reference for when you're soldering. So now we're going to want to fully assemble. Now, if you got a large hard drive, you're going to want to upgrade your IDE cable to 80 pin instead of a 40 pin, which is stock. Now, if you don't do this, you're just going to get an error screen when your Xbox boots up and you're not going to know why. Well, that's the reason why. Now, if you're using a SATA hard drive, what you got to have is this adapter, which I'll have a link in the video description. And for this part of the uh, video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your hard drive if your Xbox is only soft modded. So if you didn't do the previous steps where you solder. So, what you got to do is semi-assemble your Xbox so your hard drive is, is up and running and your disk drive is up and running and that you still have access to the IDE cable because you're going to do what is called a hot swap. So as you can see here, I got the hard drive set off to the side, the DVD drive semi-accessible and we're going to jump to our Xbox and we're going to go to the application and we're going to launch Chimp Loader. I've got more applications there, don't pay attention. You should only have Chimp Loader and XP Partitioner. Now, once this screen is loaded up, now again, this is only for soft modded Xboxes. If you plan on T-Sopping your Xbox, don't do this to hard, upgrade your hard drive. But if you are, what you wanna do is disconnect your DVD drive and plug in your hard drive 
Now you also want to have an external power supply to that DVD or uh, disk drive adapter. Now once everything's up and running, you're going to press A and your Xbox should detect that new hard drive. Now this is going to take quite a few minutes to load. I've sped everything up so just be patient and then press X once you see the screen. Now you're going to go to soft modded Xbox. Click yes, yes, yes. Now click one just to make sure it sees your drive and it does see the slave drive. Now you're going to go to the second option. You want to again second option and then you're going to go to the very last option and again the very last option and then yes now it's on autopilot and it should do its thing this could take a few minutes this is the screen you could, should see and it should, could take up to 15 to 20 minutes then it should prompt you to lock the drive click yes that is very important once you're done restart your xbox now you're going to go down to the applications again you're going to launch xp partitioner 1.3 and you should be prompted with this colorful screen and you're going to want to press a a few times on and then you should start to see settings that you're going to want to like. So I'm using a smaller drive than two terabytes just as a test, but you, you should set it up so that one of your drives has the majority of the space and whatever is left is in the very last drive. So now we're just going to make sure that everything worked and we're going to go down to system and then file explorer. And you can see all the partitions are right there. So now we're going to actually flash our Xbox chip. For most Xboxes, just throwing in the 2X and DVD and launching it will work. So we're going to do that and we're going to select the third option, TSOP Flash or Chip Xbox Tools and then Flash Mod Chip TSOP, non winbot You're going to transfer all the files over, which does it automatically. And if you don't know the size of your chip, just choose 256K and then choose a BIOS that has both F and G options. So then once that's complete, it'll automatically boot off and you should see a new boot screen. Now I'm going to show you if you had a Winbond chip. Now if you had a Winbond chip, you're going to choose the third option as the same, but now you're going to choose the second op option, flash Winbond slash sharp TSOP. Then you'll choose the first option, Winbond, and then you'll choose one of these BIOSes. Any will work. So now you're going to see you're going to come to a little hiccup where Shadow C causes a problem. So what you actually need to do is throw in the AID 4.61 disk and launch it. We're going to build Retail HDD and we're going to unmount the virtual C drive. Now what we actually got to do is reinstall a soft mod without a shadow C drive. That's a tongue twister. So when we, once we're done unmounting, we're going to go down to the soft mod one click installs and we're going to install a single boot, no virtual C. We're going to choose our dashboard, which I like Unleash X. So we're going to scroll all the way down for that. And we're going to select that. Now this is probably sounding foreign to you, but what this does is unlock our C drive, which allows us to copy files over, which is where TrueHexen is trying to place the BIOS files. Now once that's all complete, you're going to boot up and you're going to see a different screen this one. So now we could jump back to our true hexen process. So just throw in the true hexen DVD and we're going to continue to TSOP flash our WinBot. So again we're going to go to the third option TSOP flash, our second option flash WinBond, and then our first option WinBond. Select that and we'll choose our BIOS. 
and now we won't get our frozen screen so all the files will transfer over to the C drive that we need to and once that's complete it's going to boot up into XBlast. Now XBlast is pretty cool. I'm going to show you in settings you're going to be actually be able to see your chip. So if you go to settings, info, down to flash device, you'll see that you have a Winbond chip. Now again this process is only for Winbond. So back on this screen, you're going to go to HDD Flash, and then you'll see the BIOS option. You just select it, and then I believe it was Y or Start and Y. Whatever the screen says, press those button combinations, and it will start to flash. And then again, your Xbox will restart. Now for sharp Xboxes, the process is a little bit more tricky. You're going to need to burn a different set of disks which I've included in the TSOP flashing folder. So both of these you're going to want to again just drag and drop over into image burn and then again burn at the lowest support speed, supported speed. That's for your first disk. For your second disk you're going to open up image burn again and then you're going to want to write files or folders to image. Then you're going to open up the BIOS disk, copy over everything over to Image Burn, and then just double check in the options that it's on ISO 9660. It is, and then you could burn that. So this process is a little bit tricky. So first off, you're going to want to burn or pop in your hacky rehash, which was the first disk that we burnt. So once that boots up, you're going to see this screen. And you're going to go down to flash winbot. It won't say sharp, it'll say winbot. Then you're going to want to clip on your jumper cables and then launch Eurasia. So once that's booting up, it's going to take a few minutes. I've just sped everything up to be a little bit quicker. The disk drive will automatically pop open. That's when you put your BIOS disk, the second disk that we just burnt in there. Do not press the eject button or close tray button. Everything is self-automated here. So just let it close on its own. It'll see. If you burn the disk right, it'll see the BIOS and it'll burn it itself. It'll spit it right back out and then restart your Xbox. Bit of a process for a sharp. To upgrade the hard drive of your TSOP Xbox, all you need to do is throw in the AID disk into your Xbox and then turn off your Xbox. Then all you got to do is plug in your new disk drive, which you can see mine is the two terabyte drive here. Now, whether you have a SATA or IDE, the method is the same. Just make sure your cable or your adapter is set to master. Then you're going to want to for format your hard drive and just make sure you format it with a large HDD. This will take a few seconds. Once it's done, you're going to go back and you're going to mod chip one click installs. And then you're going to, again, I like to use Unleash X as my base dashboard. So I recommend doing that if you're just new to things. So once your dashboard is installed, everything should be good and we'll restart our Xbox and there we go. So once you have everything set up, whether you're soft modded or hard modded, you can use the auto installer disk to install applications. Now again, whether you're soft modded or hard modded, you and hard modded meaning TSOP flash, then you could install emulators, applications to whatever drive that you want. Now, how I like to do it is I use my E drive for applications, my G drive for applications, and my F drive for games. 
but it doesn't matter how you do it. Your C drive is generally dedicated for your operating system, also called the dashboard, and all your system files and whatnot. And until you're really familiar with this, I wouldn't touch that at all. But I would use these disks and just install whatever apps you would like. But to get to the real goodies, you want to install ROMs and games. So I'll show you how to do that. I've got them all collected up in this folder here. These are all my Xbox games. I've included media art for all the ROMs and all my ROMs. Now for your ROMs to work, you're going to have to rename them so that an Xbox will be able to see it because it's using the fat X partition type. So we're going to open up the extras folder that I've included in downloads and we're going to copy the fat X renamer. And for example, we're going to go into my GBA ROMs folder and we're going to copy over that program. So I'm going to do that for all my other ones, but I'm not going to waste my time and show you. So we're going to go back to the GPA and I'm just going to double click the FATX renamer and click rename directory. And that's going to rename all the files in there so that an Xbox can recognize it. So once that's complete, you may have now messed up your cover art pack. So what we're going to do is I've also included a, another renamer utility called fuzzy renamer. Now you can use this to rename all your cover art to match your ROMs folder. So again, what it needs to do is to start off the cover art, it's going to rename. So we're going to use our Game Boy as an example. And I'm going to make a new directory to put all our new renamed files into. So this is my original folder. I'm going to copy that. You can see these are the files we're going to rename. So instead of using the Explorer, I'm just going to copy and paste and press enter. Won't show up anything just yet. It's going to ask what ROMs it wants to match those pictures to. So again, we're going to go to our ROMs folder for Game Boy Advance, copy it over, and again, copy over its location. now it's going to match whatever pictures it can. This wasn't a perfect set to begin with, so that's why we don't have a perfect match. But since we used Fat X Renamer to rename our ROMs, you have to do this for your cover art if you have it. Now you don't have to have cover art. So now we want to paste all these new files into a new location. So we're going to paste location of the GBA file I, folder I created. And when we tell it to go, it's going to, it's actually going to create new pictures with the new renamed to match the new ROMs, which is great. Now, actually for the file transfer, we're going to go back to FileZilla. So you could either install it in the extras file or folder that I have but I've already installed it, so I'm just gonna search it up in our file explorer here. I'm gonna type in FileZilla and just launch it. Now again, we're gonna type in our IP address of our Xbox. Now make sure your Xbox is turned on and plugged into your router. And Xbox and Xbox is username and password. We're going to connect again. So now we're gonna to navigate to our games that we wanna put over. So all your Xbox games have to be inside a folder called games, just like you see here. And then you can see on my right hand side, you can see all the directories of your Xbox again, the C drive being all the place for your system files. Your E drive is generally for your apps and your F and G drive is for your games or apps as well. Your F and G drive are larger. That's why you put Xbox games generally in there. So you can see I just drag and drop right over to the F drive and it'll just start the file transfer. Now you can FTP to your Xbox or you can use the FAT Explorer program to do a direct file transfer to your hard drive. 
Now you have to have your hard drive directly plugged into your computer, either through a hard drive USB adapter or through SATA or IDE cables, but launch the FATX Explorer. And if you have a locked hard drive with the soft modded, then all you have to do is go to HD security tools and then the options select SAT and then refresh. And then in the Dropbox menu, you should see physical drive one pop up. Now when it's popped up, you'll have the option to unlock your hard drive to and use one filled keys. Now I've already unlocked my hard drive, so, but that would just say unlock instead of set password. So I'm just gonna exit out of here, but you would have just unlocked your hard drive and then go to devices. And now either an Xbox or a locked hard drive or unlocked hard drive will pop up here. So refresh, you click here, load device, and you can see, you'll see all the partitions you would if you had done an FTP. So I'm going to mount my F drive and you can see it's just like the memory card we did earlier. So I'll navigate back to my Xbox games and I'm just gonna drag and drop the whole directory right over. And I'm gonna use, I'll show you TerraCopy, I find is a better way to copy over large files like this, because there's over a million files here. So in the extras folder, I've included the installer for TerraCopy. This is a Russian program, so some people are a little bit funny about that right now. I don't blame them, but install it if you want to. Don't if you don't. File Explorer is just as fine. I just find if there's a problem or anything happens mid-transfer, TerraCopy will save your progress, and I find it's a lot easier. So again, use it if you want to, but compared to an FTP, if you look at the speed, it's about five times faster at the very least. So with File Explorer, what I didn't mention is there's a few settings that you need to do to make sure that it's running smoothly. So you can see we have a few failed transfers at the bottom. So we're gonna go down to transfer, transfer type, and make sure it's set to binary. And then we're gonna right click, reset all. And then we're also gonna go down to settings and we're gonna make sure that we only have one transfer at a time. So once that's set up, we should have less failed transfers. Yeah, that's pretty much all the settings you gotta do. And you can see, right click, reset all. I recommend using FATX Explorer while your Xbox is disassembled and FileZilla once you've got it fully assembled again, but it's up to you. Now we're gonna fully assemble our Xbox again. I like to put a piece of tape in between the hard drive adapter and the hard drive just in case things short out and tape down my ribbon cable. Now again, it's fairly simple to reassemble so I'm not gonna go in depth into that. Again, just screw everything back up. I like to label it because I've got more than a dozen different Xboxes, so but just put the screws back in. I like to assemble the center ones first because that's where the ribbon cables are and if you have any issues. But once it's fully assembled, you can jump back in and you can see here are the games that I we just transferred over. The applications, whatever ones you've installed, they'll show up here. Our emulators, again, same thing. So that's pretty much it for that. Now. For our applications, you do have other dashboards in here. I like to use Xbox Media Center, so I'm gonna boot that up, but it's up to you once you get used to it. But we're gonna boot up Xbox Media Center and there you go. You got yourself a fully modded Xbox, whether it be T-Sopped or not, with an upgraded hard drive with two different ways to transfer over all the files that you need. So if you got any questions or suggestions for another video, please leave a comment below and like and subscribe. This took quite a while to put together.
But if this video does good, then I was thinking the next video on the Xbox is going to be on how to extend your RAM from 64 megabytes to 128. So hopefully it does do good. So like and subscribe.